My compliments to the chef. Look out, because next time I'm going to make French toast. <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> oh, good. Hey, you tired? No. Actually, I, I slept better last night than I have in a long time. That's because of you. Really? That must mean that I don't snore or hug the covers. Well... No, you know, ever since Greenlee was arrested for killing David, I've just been dreaming about the past a lot. Not the good memories. Henry? The way you looked at me when I... Oh, that I could do that to another human being. He abused you for years, Madison. It doesn't change the fact that I killed a man. You think you're over it, and then it just it comes at you in the middle of the night, and there's nothing you can do about it, you know? But last night, with your arms around me, I felt so safe. It's like you chased my nightmares away. Hmm. Does that mean that I rate for another piece of toast? Extra jam. Yes. <laughs> so, busy day? Well, um, Greenlee's got a... I yell hearing. What about you? What about uh, what about your day? You don't have to do this. Tiptoe around the whole Greenlee thing. I know you're committed to helping her. You're gonna you're gonna be spending time with her and helping her and, and whatever. I'm great with that. You're great with that. Good. I'm I'm good with it. I'm fine. I'm totally. Completely, absolutely fine. Your Honor, not only is the defendant accused of Capital One murder, but she has tampered with evidence, obstruction of justice, and she has enough money to go anywhere in the world. Your Honor, I can vouch for my client's sincere desire to remain in Pine Valley. Uh, Mrs. Hayward disappeared for a year, Your Honor, and wasn't found until she wanted to be During found. During the period to which the district attorney refers my daughter was either injured, unconscious, or recovering from surgery, she was unable to return. Mm -hmm. And now that she's well, she's got all the more options, doesn't she? Your Honor, uh, she has been denied bail. Why are we revisiting Because this? my client's previous attorney did not adequately present her case for bail. Your Honor, my client lives in Pine Valley. She has family here. She has friends here. A successful business that she is eager to continue to run. But most of all, she wants to prove to a jury of her peers that she did not kill her husband. Well, then she'll have no trouble sitting in a cell until she gets that opportunity. She has no reason to go anywhere. As her lawyer and her father, I can give you my word of honor that she will not leave town. And I have your personal guarantee on this, Mr. Montgomery? Yes, Your Honor, you do. I hereby order the defendant, at least on $100,000 bail. But Your Honor, she has been accused of a capital offense. Ms. Colby, I've made my ruling. We're adjourned. Thank you, Your Honor. That's it? That's it. I'm free. You're free. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you are thank welcome. You. Thank you. Howdy, Scott. Got a minute? Not a good time. Good. All you gotta do is listen. You and your cousin Jen here. Oh, boy. You two are like... night and day. Just like your daddies. Adam and Stuart. My Uncle Pete couldn't stand Adam. But he respected your father. Now, I know you're trying to do the right thing in this partnership with your cousin. But the fact is, my friend, if you want to get what you want, you're going to have to fight for it. And when you're fighting somebody as dirty as Junior, you gotta fight harder and dirtier than he does. And I know that's not your way. Don't be so sure. I do love Scott. He was my life, and you have ruined everything. Okay, you know what? You wanna blame me? You wanna throw things? You wanna cry to me about how you're never gonna get your happily ever after with Scott? That's fine. But at some point, you're gonna realize that last night wasn't a mistake. Ah. 
Like hell it wasn't. It was a wake up call, Annie. You can cry all these big tears about how, you, how much you love Scott. But we both know you married the wrong man. And are you the right man, JR? Tell me, are you going to sweep me off my feet now? Are you going to show up on your big white horse and carry me and Emma off into the sunset? I'm fighting to death. A custody case. Well, of advice. course, yes. There's always an excuse. Something more I important. I have to yeah. focus on it, Annie. Yeah, yeah. And I would just, I would just be in the way. The only thing I'd be good for is a, is a quickie, right? No, no you, it's more than that. You know it. We have a connection. Oh, God. Oh, God. I am so sick of hearing about this amazing, intense connection you love to talk about. No, the truth is, you wanted to get me into bed. And you did, again, last night. That's all it was. That's what it was about. So to hell with you. Now listen to me. No, you listen to me. You want me, but you have never said that you love me, ever. Scott, he told me every single day. Scott loved me the way that I've always wanted to be loved, and now I have, I have lost it. I have thrown it away because of some stupid connection you're talking about. God, oh, I, I hate you. No, you don't. I'm just upset. Once everything calms down, stop, we'll do stop pretending right. like there's some option for us. You and me will never be together. Don't you understand that? Even if we wanted to be, we would destroy each other. You would lose your son. And I would lose whatever small sliver of self-respect I still have left. So if you think last night was inevitable, go on and think that. But the truth is, the only thing that was inevitable is that the both of us have completely self-destructed. You know, my father, he, you know... He used to say that there was good in everybody. And sometimes you gotta look a little harder, you gotta dig a little deeper, but it's there. My father was a lot of things, Caleb, but he wasn't a fighter. That's your father. If I could share something with you about combat. If your enemy is attacking you, you don't reason with him. You go for the jugular. You end it as fast as you can. Because if you don't, he's going to kill you. I know exactly what I have to do. Everything is upside down right now. But we'll get through no, this. No, no, there is no we, JR, and there never will be. So please just leave me alone. I hope I'm not interrupting. Well, when did you get back? Yesterday. Uh, well, I'll let you two talk. Actually, no, I, I came to see you. Oh. Okay, um, well, our conversation's over, so... We'll finish it later. Welcome home. Thank you. Are you all right? You look kind of ragged. What do you want, Erica? The new editor at Tempo is a good friend of mine. And she's so interested in doing a major feature on the new generation of Chandlers and Cortlands, and I assured her that you would be thrilled to participate. And what's the catch? I have to uh, wear a clown wig on the cover? Oh, Annie, <laughs> you're so funny. I mean, it would be such a coup. It couldn't hurt for you to be featured in the same magazine that was once run by Brooke English. Show the world that you have triumphed despite the fact that you stole your husband. You can't stand me. The last thing you would want is for me to triumph. So why don't you tell me why you're really here? Look, just for the record, Brooke English was never a friend of mine. But this is really about somebody else anyway. Apparently, last night... J.R. and Scott were arguing, and J.R. accused Scott of stealing from a dead man. Who, who heard that, Caleb? Oh, that doesn't matter. Um, I, you know, to be honest, I don't really know anything about it, so if that's all... No, that's not all. I happen to know that the dead man is Palmer Cortland. <laughs> that's, that's ridiculous. No, it's not. Not at all, actually. You see, I was close to Palmer, and in the last few weeks of his life, 
Scott was a regular visitor. I wouldn't know anything about it. Really? You and your husband don't share things? Maybe just something that Scott mentioned? You were so close to Palmer, so there's really nothing that I can tell you that you wouldn't already know, Erica. So. Well, if Scott stole something from Palmer, surely you can understand my concern. I, I can't deal with you right now. Please just go. It's all falling apart, isn't it, Annie? You worked so hard to build yourself back up, and now... cracks everywhere. How could you do it, Jr.? I love you. You're my brother. But sometimes I hate how selfish and destructive you can be. And I want you to be happy, I too. But just when I thought that maybe you had a shot... I'll be fine, Colby. When Marissa told me that she was suing for primary custody of AJ, I stood up for you. I told her that he would be safe here, that nothing would happen to him. He will be. Marissa's whole case is based on this house being toxic. And you just proved that by jumping into bed with your cousin's wife. This has nothing to do with A.J. It has everything to do with A.J. You honestly can't believe that. Everything you do, the way you act, who you hurt, it all matters. I'm his father. And I have a shark of an attorney who will destroy anyone who gets in my way. The person who gets in your way the most is you. So when we get Cortland back, we're going to get you a real office. How'd it go with your friend Annie? Well, when I got there, she and JR were in the middle of some kind of a fight already. I mean, she was already an emotional wreck, and she was already completely off balance. And then, <sighs> when I mentioned to her that Scott had stolen something from a dead man, she completely shut down. And after that, when I said that I thought the victim was Palmer, I thought she was going to just find something and stab me with it. Kidding. Did she say anything incriminating? No, nothing specific. But I have no doubt that she knows exactly what it was Scott stole. I know that. And JR, too. What was it? What was it, Pete? What'd they take? It was definitely something big. If Junior is protecting Scott, it's got to be something that would take down Chandler. Hmm? And look at you. You got a gleam in your eye. You like this. This is fun for you. Well, what about you? You're enjoying this. Beats the hell out of cruising the Mediterranean with Captain Marvel. <laughs> look at you. Three women. I have an incredible lawyer. Yes, you sure do. Hello, Ryan. Hey, have a seat. I never would have gotten through this last few days in jail. You hadn't talked me down, so... Thank you for helping me keep my sanity. Actually, you have something else to thank Ryan for. Um, my being here, he called me and told me what was going on. You did? I told you not to. Well, you know, I thought you needed the best, so... Here he is. Thank you. Both of you. You know, I uh, know I always insist that I can take care of myself, but even amazingly independent women need their dad and their friends. Looks like a party. Hey. Hey, Lee is uh, out on bail. Thanks to Jack Springs, of course, of course, of course. I'm happy for you. Thank you. I was just upstairs in the office. Last quarter sales. Figures, I think you'll be very happy. Good. Hey, why don't you join us? Here. Oh, I have a lot of work to do. No, 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 no. Stay. I know there's at least one of your bosses that's going to be fine with you taking a little personal time. Okay? Wouldn't be a party without you. See? Come on. Sit here. Sit here. 